I know that I'm not the only one that feels this way. Uh, there's, there's a number of us, but I was just meditating here and on this beautiful stream and man, it hit me like a ton of bricks, so I thought I'd share it. Our movie's real. Welcome to another episode of A Few Minutes with Marvin. I inspire those who aspire to make positive changes in their lives. And yeah, this is going to be a fun one. Um, it's not tongue-in-cheek. For me, there is, there's a lot of reality in this. And, and here's why. Here, you know, at the end of the day, there are some truths out there that, that are being projected to us. But they're being projected to us as fiction, right? As that can never happen. You can never be Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman, right? Or you, you can never be Neo from the, the Matrix. That was all made up. That's fictional, right? Luke Skywalker, that's a fictional character. And all that happened was all fiction. And as you saw in the beginning of this, this uh, video, I used a, a scene from The Last Dragon which happened to be one of my favorite movies when I was watching movies. I was a big movie buff. <laughs> and this one, it'll make you giggle. So if you're so inclined, go watch it. You know, and, and just take it for what it is in the genre that it was in, karate in the 80s. Um, and then don't judge it. Just just watch it and, and see if you, you notice. Pick up on the message, right? The underlying message that's being portrayed here, like I did. Um, so, so let's, that's a good place to start. Let's start with that one. You have this young kid who's a, a karate, you know, he's been trained by a master. And he's constantly looking for the next master to take him to the next level, right? But he avoids um, confront confrontation from the local master bully guy uh, showing up. <laughs> it's funny. Um, and at the end of the movie like you saw in, in the beginning of this uh, video, he realizes that he doesn't need another master. He is a master. He's done all the work. And that's a poignant um, realization for you on your spiritual journey, right? I've said it in other videos. When is enough enough? When is you learning going to be enough for you to say, no, I'm the master. I am the last dragon. I possess that power of the glow like in this movie but you do possess that power what is that power it's a frequency it's your positive thoughts it's you becoming the creator of your reality that's how you become the master and there's your confirmation beautiful fish <laughs> um so yeah for me that was very real and for some reason back in the 80s when i saw it for the first time it really resonated with me even though i was nowhere near on my spiritual path but that that scene where he took back his power, he is a master, really resonated with me. And I've used it quite a bit throughout my journey now, saying, you know, I am the master, I'm the last dragon, you know. Who's the I, right? It's not ego, it's just, it's just a realization that, yes, I can still watch other YouTubers and influencers, and I still, you know, uh, talk to other people, but at the end of the day, I'm in control of my destiny, of my next now move, uh, moments, of my next experiences, right? That's that's one of the truths in, in the movies, right? That was buried in there under a message. 
but also think about um, Star Wars, right? Look at that whole epilogue. I mean, there's a lot there to unpack, right? This kid is born into this world, right, that, that's under attack and taken over and controlled and ruled, and then you have the rebellion, right? And then he finds a spiritual path, right, and decides he wants to be part of the fight. He wants to be on the front lines. He wants to be that light warrior, right, picking up his sword, his lightsaber, and helping save this reality, the universe, right? So we go through his his struggles and his challenges, and then in one of the later movies, he disappears, right? You know, it, it was discovered that that uh, he almost killed Kylo Ren, um, uh, Princess Leia's son, because he saw the evil in him. But he didn't do it. He couldn't do it. So then he. he you know, they portray him as somebody who just didn't care and left the whole thing, right? And left the rebellion to fend for itself. And that's why um, Ray goes and, and finds him, right? They, they got to find Luke. But there's, there's the arc, right? There's the arc. You go on your spiritual path and you do these things, right? You get involved and you shift your energy, you help others shift energies, right? And, and you become powerful, right? Because you know your strengths, right? And you start using them. But then you find yourself in that spiritual ego where you're like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm part of a whole collective consciousness. I'm not this one person, this Neo, this Luke Skywalker who's meant to save the entire universe, right? I'm part of a conscious collective. However, I have been feeding the energies that are trying to suppress us, right? How do, how do you how do you how does that happen right Luke was fighting fire with fire right against his father he used anger against the Emperor he used anger against Kylo Ren he used anger all the while not realizing that in him doing that and striking them and fighting them on their terms and in their their places look what happened to all the Jedi they got slaughtered right because they got found out and they were trying to just battle back he realized I don't have to fight this because once I don't give it any more power or give it my power it eventually will go away it won't be my universe anymore so he was on that solitary island tranquil not a care in the world because it wasn't violence or nothing else was entering his universe that he created you might say well he left all those people dying no he elevated himself out of that dimension you can too. It's not about saving people. It's about taking yourself out of there and creating a universe where that doesn't exist to begin with. So he did that, right? And then at the end, you know, when he came back in the very last latest movie, well, I don't know if there's any more past this one, but um, where he came back, right, and Kylo Ren was so focused on killing him this time that he lost focus of the people escaping. So how, how was Luke um, being of service then? He realized that he can go back into the Matrix, just like Neo did, back into the Matrix, but not in it physically. He could use the illusion against them. So now he's not fighting fire with fire. He went in there energetically, and he knew that this was going to be his last sacrifice. This was his life purpose and soul mission, but that's why he had to get out of it so that he can see this clearly. And what does he do at the end? He goes there as a projection, energetically. So no matter what they did, they couldn't kill him. But the intention was not to save the world, to draw the attention away from those energies, negative energies, so that the new energies, Ray and, and all the other people in there, could could be saved and and leave and at the end you see Ray finds her power right she could have gone into that mountain and perished with all of those people as well in that scene while you know before Luke came came to save the day or not save the day but before you realize what his mission was no instead she came and went on the other side and energetically found her power she knew that she needed to lift those rocks out of there and that's what she could do 
she didn't have to go sacrifice herself to save them and neither did Luke in the end that was his ultimate sacrifice that was his soul mission so he completed it he didn't die he left on his own terms see how that mirrors where our journeys are and where they can lead I see it so crystal clear now And that's, you know, I'm not saying that I'm there, but I'm certainly removing myself out of the, what's going on in this world. I don't know what's going on because it, that's not the universe I want to live in that I create for myself. This is my universe, peace, tranquility, right? And if there's any energies that don't resonate with me here, they can't come up to my level. And if they do, they're no longer energies that don't resonate with me. You get it? You understand? I don't have to do anything here. I don't have to say, oh my goodness, you know, because there was a civil war here, there must be bad energies. I gotta run, run, run. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't. I can just be here and be in my energies and not project any fear or doubt, right? Because once I do, then I'm inviting those energies to be here with me. So I don't do that, right? And this is not an illusion, me sitting here, very comfortable with no doubt that I created this universe for myself and I'm meant to be here in this now moment. Is this the end of my soul mission? I don't believe so, right? But I did gain some new clarity. I was meditating here. I gained some new clarity on what is my soul mission or part of my soul mission and now I've aligned myself to receive the manifestations of the resources that this vehicle this vessel Marvin Camacho requires to move on right that's that's how this works and and you can see that in many movie themes many fictional movies right because the truth is out there it's just being projected to us as illusion the Marvel comics right all the strong beings the mutants who are the mutants we're, we're the mutants but we're not mutants right we're not different just because I I can connect spiritually with some energies and because I can uh, channel Reiki healing and, and other things that doesn't make me unique those are just my gifts that I I am embodying and I know how to use them for the highest good but I don't have to go out there telling people look what I can do I'm a psychic I'm a telepath I can do this I can do it. that's just not uh, in alignment with with me when if and when I see an opportunity to be aligned with using those I know when to do it and how to do it and I don't have to say look at me look what I did I don't and I you know and neither did Luke Luke walked in there energetically and he walked out of there energetically went right back to his body the physical body and then it was done it was it was done there was no more for him to learn right in that now moment where that that spirit goes from there who knows but do you get does it is that clear to you um, it, it just you know the matrix is the other movie obviously or once he, he can see he can see the energies right and it, they didn't fool him anymore they weren't an illusion to him anymore right so they couldn't penetrate his force field no matter what they did in the, the, the following movies right and then his ultimate sacrifice came as well, where he sacrificed himself. Uh, he, he went face to face with the enemy and, and helped the enemy rid itself of its enemy. That's how he was of service, but he didn't look at that the, the, the bots as enemies. He just knew that 
they could help serve him and he could serve them. So it was an alignment. So what other movies did, can you think of that, that when you look back you go, wow, there's a, there's a message there that's my truth, right? It doesn't have to be anybody else's, but it resonates with me so much. Look, look at this, right? Even a movie like The Princess Bride, right? The, uh, the, the Pirate Roberts, whatever, uh, <laughs> whatever label they gave him, the Dread Pirate Roberts, right? What was his soul mission? Right? He was meant to not save the queen or, or the princess bride and to marry her, but that was part of his destiny. He went through a lot to get there. I mean, he nearly died, he got electrocuted, he got all kinds of stuff, he got poisoned, but he built immunity through all those, right? So what's the moral of that story? Take care of this physical body. Expose it to those toxins that you need to, your, your immune system needs to learn about so they can heal, right? That's what I got out of it. Most people go, what, you got that out of, out of that movie? He's like, yeah, yeah, look at what he did, right? He fought a giant, he, he, he uh, bested a, a expert swordsman and, and the most intelligent human being, he, he outwitted him. That's his spiritual journey, that was his growth. Remind you of anybody? <laughs> Yourself, right? We do these things, we put ourselves in these situations so we can learn from them experience them take those lessons the future proves a past right you learned it back then so that it's relevant now he built an, Im an immune uh, an immunity to iocane or whatever they called it right so that when he met up with with that um, the, the, uh, the genius right the genius <laughs> he could best him by putting the poison in both glasses makes sense right so I thought this was a fun topic right now um, but it's a real topic it's one so that you can embody who you are and you don't need another guru to tell you that anymore it's nice to listen to those with respect and honor for those and their their journeys or to, to just gain a little bit more insight and clarity right to keep learning because we always keep learning but you are the master you are the Jedi. You are the master Jedi. You're the last dragon. You are Captain America. Right? You are Wonder Woman. You're Thor, wh whomever you resonate with. Right? Because we're, we are capable of so much. And we've, we've been, um, there's been an illusion around us to keep us suppressed, thinking that we can't achieve anything, we can't do anything, we can't have anything, we're nobodies, we're just these meat suits. Well, these meat suits are powerful. You take care of it properly, feed it properly, exercise, do the things, right? Energetically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, creatively. Use the finances that you have to buy those things, to get the organic, you know, foods. That's the investment you have to make in this body to keep elevating on your spiritual path. And finally, not finally, but in this now moment, serve your soul purpose, right? Your life mission. You don't have to force it you have to go through a lot of things and learning but there'll come a time when you say I don't need to give that energy anymore I'm gonna go sit over there for a while I'm gonna go up into the mountains for a few months however that resonates for you get yourself out of the illusion so you can clearly see that you are still in an illusion even on your spiritual path see the illusion clearly and use the illusion against itself but with love and this journey will bring you more blessings than you can ever imagine.
You are powerful. You are the one and only master. Own it. Accept it. With love, grace, ease, peace, humbleness, humility, gratitude, and respect. Once you embody those traits with being the master, there's nothing else for you to do. You can do this. Trust yourself. And if you'd like to continue this conversation, right, because you need help getting there, I can certainly help you as a spiritual transformation coach. Here's a link to my website. It'd be my honor to help you get to your next level by just pointing out the obvious <laughs> or the not so obvious that should be obvious to everyone. It'd be my honor to do so. And I really enjoyed making this video. I hope you got the message and it reaches you and you're inspired to really see these things and maybe revisit some of those movies. Not, not to judge them, but just there may be another message that's deeply hidden in there that's all for you. And you don't have to show it to anybody else or tell anybody else they need to go watch it because they're gonna see this. No, they may not see what you see. That's cool. But make sure that you get your own message. And I'm not telling you to go watch every superhero movie. Just, if something resonates with you, revisit it, right? I don't feel the need to do that right now with anything, but if, if one comes into my now moment, I think the, the latest Avatar movie is calling to me, that something water or something, I don't know. So I, I may take a look at that when it comes out on DVD, although I don't have a player, but where I'm saying they do. <laughs> so do that, do that for yourself. But just start looking um, more energetically into some of the things that you continue to watch. Um, especially if they, you're drawn to them and they come to you out of nowhere. Pay, pay a little bit closer attention to the meanings and to see what resonates with you. And that'll help you on your spiritual awakening journey. Give this video a like, a share, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. I'm truly grateful. I would like to create this community to grow even more. And that, and I am doing so. And I hope that you'll be a part of that journey with me. And I'd love to be a part of yours. So stay on your journey, on your unique path as the master of your own universe. And have an amazing day.